Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to study the Ajax option class and its properties. In last video, I covered the difference between synchronous request and asynchronous request. At that time, we actually used the Ajax option class and we saw some important properties also. But this, studio, uh, this video will cover the extra properties of Ajax option class. So let us see that properties in detail. So we actually covered the update target ID property, then we covered URL property and as well as we covered HTTP method property also. Okay. Now here we are going to see the confirm property. Okay. So when you set this confirm property to a message, that message get displayed before making an AJAX request. Now next is loading element ID. So loading element ID, you have to specify the ID of an HTML element that will be displayed while the AJAX request is being performed. And suppose you want to specify the duration of the animation, you can use loading element duration. Even uh, we saw the insertion mode property, actually I do not, I didn't set that property. So by default it was, it is replaced. But suppose you want to insert or insert your content before and after your HTML element. In that case you can set the insertion mode property also. Now the next thing we are going to see the Ajax callbacks also. Okay, so basically, this call, for this callbacks, you have to specify the name of the JavaScript function that you want to execute at various points in Ajax request lifecycle, and these are set using this property that is on begin, on complete, on failure, and on success. So when you when when you set the on begin property, at that time what happened? The specified function called immediately before making the AJAX request. On complete is called when the request has completed, whether it is succeeded or failed, it do not matter. On failure will be called when your request failed and on success will be called when your request is successful. So many times we, we use on failure and on sequence. So definitely depending on your requirement, you can use on begin and on complete also. And these are the respective jQuery event for this property. So initially we are going to focus on the property also. So let us see this part practically in Visual Studio. So here I am going to use the same application that we implemented in our last video. Okay. So again I am going to use the same example here already a async controller is created. Okay. There is one index method as you can see here. One get stood method is there, which is returning the partial view. Okay, now let us define a simple property that is confirm. So here we have to specify the message. So let us say display student list. So it can be any message. So I'm just specifying this message display student list. Now let us run this and let us observe the output. So here what happened every time when you make a request, make an Ajax request, a confirmation dialog box will be shown to you okay and there will be two buttons if you say yes then only your request will be made to the server otherwise nothing will happen so actually it is taking time so be patient So as you can see here course list is displayed in a drop down and student list is, list is displayed in a table. Now currently it is showing the details of all the students. So when I select a particular course and when I click on a submit, okay, due to this confirm property, what happened? It is showing this message that display student list and if I say okay, then Ajax request will be made. Again, if I click 
be CA and say submit and I'll say cancel no request will be made okay and I already ex explained this example in the video of synchronous versus asynchronous request so if you are unaware of it please watch that video then only you can understand this okay so I hope you got the concept of confirm message and confirm property now let us create a Ajax loader okay so here what I'm going to do for that I have to define the loading element ID property and I have to specify the ID of an ID of my HTML element so let me create that HTML element first so D class is equal to say clear fix just to have a gap in it nothing else just I applied one bootstrap class to this div now div ID is equal to you can name it anything so time being I am load, naming it Ajax loader okay inside this div I am creating one span tag you can create you can add image also okay you can add any GIF image and you can write an extra CSS for this also now initially let me hide this so I'll say style is equal to display colon none so initially it will be invisible okay when this part get displayed when our Ajax request is processing so here now I'll specify the loading element ID loading element ID is equal to the ID of our HTML element that we want to show so let us check this let me refresh the page okay now here it will first of all ask you for the confirmation see actually uh, everything is on our local machine that's why this process is uh, done very fast okay so what we can do we can time being we can slip our thread for few seconds so we can view the message so threading System dot threading dot thread dot slip. I'll just slip my thread for thousand millisecond means for one second. So this program will take a time of one second and then after it will execute. Just that is the purpose. When you actually put your data, sorry, you put your code on a server, definitely it is going to take a time. So everything is on a local server, that's why that message appears and immediately disappears okay so let us run it again so for one second my thread will be suspended okay and then after the code will be executed otherwise when you're putting your code on a server in that case this code is not necessary i just want to show that loader that is the purpose only say mca I'll say please wait loading let us try for BCA See, now the BCA result get displayed okay so I hope you got the purpose of loading element so definitely there are very uh, you can say very formatted CSS for the Ajax loader also you can take a help of that also okay now suppose you want to specify the loading element duration it is also in milliseconds so you can specify it here so uh, I think it is in the form of integer so I should not enclose it in double quote so basically it controls the animation of your lo loading element this part get animated okay means in one millisecond it slide down and then after slide out so for that purpose we use loading element duration now your time being I'm just going to comment this part of confirm message okay because every time I have to click over that ok button now we will define the rest of the property okay that I told you here 
we are going to use this callback functions okay and for that we are going to use this on begin on complete on failure and on success property okay and these are the function syntax okay so if you are going to assign any function to on success property it will accept one argument if you are going to assign one function to the on failure property it will accept two parameters now let us write the code so first of all what will i do i specify the property say on success so suppose i created a success function in my javascript code so it this name can be any name i remember this thing this name can be any name then on complete i'll say complete then on failure say failure and begin i'll say begin okay so it should be in a double quote now what is the next step i have to write a javascript code so let me write it in a section script now function success so actually success function take an argument data argument hmm? actually again this name can be any name this name can be any name so what it does actually whatever data written by your requested method will be collected in this data argument so what i'll do i'll display it in a alert box now next is uh, let me put one caption also so we can determine which part is this so success plus data now similarly i'll create another function complete so complete actually takes see it also takes two up argument one is request and another one is status so req again name can be anything argument name can be anything so alert so complete so let me show you the status so it will show whether that request is succeed or failed so you can determine it on complete event so function say failure so it also takes two parameter request and error again name can be anything so failure plus error okay and last one is remain that is begin so function begin so your begin i think begin do not takes any parameter okay so let us define it as it is so alert begin okay now we will see how this functions get called at various stage of ajax life cycle okay let me check it again whether i define it properly or not okay everything is done so let us refresh the page and just observe the sequence of various stages see when you make a request first of all begin get executed means till now the request is not make to the server before that only begin before that begin function get executed okay then after loading part success part get executed okay and what it does it returns your data okay and this data is same as your partial view result so this data is going to be injected in this area okay now after success complete part get executed and what is the sequence status of the request status of the request is what success so there is no failure therefore failure part do not get executed now for failure what will i do i specify the url action name incorrect okay and definitely there will be a failure and we will observe the output 
से बी सी है से बिगिन गेट एग्जीक्यूट है ना फेलियर इज देयर इट इज शोइंग एन एर एंड देन आफ्टर कंप्लीट ऑल्सो गेट एग्जीक्यूटेड एंड शोज दैट देर इज एन एर नाउ दिस टाइम सक्सेस विल नेवर एग्जीक्यूट ओके सो आई होप यू गॉट दिस यू गॉट दी कॉल बैक फंक्शंस ओके बेसिकली वेन एवर वी आर वर्किंग विथ अ जेस एंड डेटा करेंटली वी आर रिटर्निंग द एच टी एम एल सी एज यू कैन सी हियर वॉट माई अजैक्स रिस्पॉन्स इज माई अजैक्स रिस्पॉन्स इज एच टी एम एल ओके इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पार्शियल व्यू रिजल्ट ओके ठीक है दिस इज माई रिस्पॉन्स ओके ना इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल सी or we will return a json data okay and when that json data will be written by your ajax as a response at that time we have to inject that data in our table and for that we have to write a code on our success function okay so in that case these functions are very helpful okay or suppose you want to perform any action when the, whenever there is a failure suppose you want to display the error message in place of this table so you can display it on success suppose you want to perform some different kind of action you can do it on an on success function whenever the completion of ajax request is done so in that case suppose you want to perform any action you can perform it on this on complete function so that's why this callback functions are provided to give a more control to the programmer and in next video we are going to use this success and failure function along with a json data so i hope you enjoy this and if you like my videos don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to press a bell icon to get a notification of new program thank you very much